Hi and welcome. Here I am in the Shangri-La North Bar in Cairns and it's a gorgeous day. It is starting to clear. It's been pelting down. I've got a really special guest here today. Kate Genby is an amazing wildlife and equine artist from Victoria. Hi Kate. Hi Cindy. Welcome to Draw PJ. Thank you. And you're just visiting Cairns, aren't you? Yes, just a short visit at the moment. Yeah, and what brings you here to Cairns? I came to visit my sister and also to see a, a lovely retrospective exhibition of William T. Cooper. It was up at the Atherton Regional Gallery. And you create the most amazing, I mean Kate's work is absolutely incredible. She works in different mediums and she'll tell us about those in a minute. But I just want to get to know Kate a little bit more and let you know more about Kate too. So Kate, could you tell us a bit more about yourself? I was originally from East Africa. I was born in Nairobi and lived my whole childhood in Kenya and Tanzania, which was an incredible wow. childhood to be out in the, with the wild animals. And Were you scared of like the lions no, and all that? No. there's always an element of danger, but yeah. you adapt to your environment, I guess. And I can remember drawing at four and wow. um, always, pretty much always animals. And I was luckily in, um, educated and encouraged by my parents. They were very supportive and my father in particular always critiqued my artwork. Wow, was he an artist? No, well, he, he could draw very well, mm. but he didn't do it as a hobby. I've got some beautiful drawings of his, but he was honest and he would say what was good about it, but he'd also point out what was lacking. They were also both of them great photographers, so I think it was their eye for detail that you know, passed on to me that I love to get the detail and and when did you move to was it to Australia next that you moved to? We did a year in England. Oh wow! And yes. then out to Australia. So I was arrived in Australia when I was ten. Kate creates the most amazing artworks, and she chooses to create wildlife and equine. And I'd love to know a bit more about that, about what inspires her to do that. So, Kate, can you tell us some more about that? I've got some images here. Um, we'll have a look at those in a moment. But can you tell me what inspires you and when you were first inspired to create the subject matter that you create? Cindy, my passion was African wildlife, growing up and being involved in the bush as I was. And I kept on a realistic path because I think nature's the best designer and I like to pay homage to that and not change it and abstract it. But when I arrived in Australia, I was taken aback that there was no large wildlife here. So, Because you, you also create equine art. What's the connection there? Well, I just developed that more in Australia um, because it's, I suppose it's accepted more than the African wildlife, although that is my, my deepest love, is the, the African wildlife. But I equally do enjoy horses, horses. drawing horses. Yeah. 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 So I've actually got some images because I asked you to send some for me so we could chat about it and I thought we'd just spend some time. I'm going to go through these images with you and with Kate and we're just going to chat about them. So let's have a look at this first one here. Now this is, this is a beautiful lion. Can you tell me some more about that? Oh, I just love the look on that lion's face. I mean, how did you get... Did, did you get the reference photographs yourself? I do always, yeah. pretty much always use my own reference. I love, I still go on safari whenever I can every few years to just yeah, soak up a bit more Africa and collect my own reference. Because I think it, you build it into the artwork, you've experienced the sights and sounds and the atmosphere that's there and it comes more from your heart that you yeah, can portray certain things that you've seen and experienced. And I don't know about you, but getting reference <laughs> photos of a lion could be pretty scary. Look, Kate, can you tell us how do you actually get those reference photographs? So you up close and personal with yes. these animals. Yes, How absolutely. do you do that? Tell us about that. That's so interesting. Well, I, I use this, um, safari companies that have you know open-sided vehicles and very good guides, so they know where to find the wildlife and. I only have a 300 millimeter lens, but you can get up pretty close to them, but you've got to be lucky as well to see them. So 
Now I'm really excited to show you some more of Kate's work. So let me show you some of her equine art. And the thing I really love about her work so much is her ability to truthfully capture the muscles and the skeletal structure, the details in the horse. Something you have to realise when you're drawing is it's not just the surface that you're portraying. Everything on the surface relates to the structure underneath. So you've got the muscle structure and you've got the skeletal structure which causes the highlights and the shadows in the animal and they have to be exact to and I, I, I think a horse in particular has to be exact otherwise people notice and it's always a challenge to get them to look accurate and we've realistic. done a great job there Thank you. absolutely <laughs> beautiful and I love this one here this zebra and the way that you've just captured the little bird right in that focal point area yes that was that was a lovely um, photograph that I, I cropped down just to make the bird I guess the the accent of the drawing and was that bird actually really there yes, in the photograph yes, oh you're joking no, it was yeah there. oh wow it was and you've, you've just captured that so so beautifully you know one of my favorite subjects that Kate is just absolutely amazing at drawing is elephants she's incredible at it and elephants have got all that texture it must be so fun to draw them can you tell me, Kate, about your experiences with this particular image? They're spectacular for their, not only their size, but their, their texture. It's, um, and their, their huge ears, it's all just amazing. And she was very close to the vehicle, so I just sat there and watched her for ages. And to capture that in pencils, um, just a labour of love, I suppose, because that was huge. But now, don't tell me that you just actually drew in front of her while she no, stood there. No, 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 because no, no. these take hours, don't they? They do. That you might have weeks. Yeah, weeks, weeks, weeks isn't it? Weeks, yeah, one. absolutely. Was that like 120 hours or more? Would have been probably more. Yeah, plus. Yeah. So you took a lot of reference photos then when she was close. And I you did. Worked yes. them. Do you work from very many reference photos at um, one time? It depends on the subject. Yeah. Um, mm. But I always take as many as I can, different angles to cover everything so mm. yeah take as many in case as you I need can. to zoom in on one particular area yes yeah. yeah so that's really important to you and when I look at your work the thing that I'm in awe of is she creates all these amazing delicate gradations in graphite and they're beautiful soft edges and hard edges and you can really see that she's thought about the form not only the outer form but also the underneath form too I can clearly see that she's got an incredible understanding of the muscle structure and everything do you research anatomy when you're drawing I do yeah yes. tell and us about that um, oh I've got some fabulous reference books and um, yes I, I constantly do study them and I think just handling animals as well helps so yeah as much knowledge as you can get before you tackle your subject is the best so I know how busy you are, Kate, and I know you're about to fly out, you're going home shortly, but I've just got a few more quick questions I have to fit in here. Um, one question I've been dying to ask, Kate, is if you only had one piece of equipment, well, your favourite piece of equipment, I know there'll be plenty, but is there one that's really special to you that you just couldn't do without? Yes, I think it's my rotary pencil sharpener because I do so much sharpening through a day that I, it's just a brilliant tool. It's quick and efficient and helps me out. So is that a handheld or is it battery operated or electric um, operated? It's, it's, it's hand, hand wound. Yes. Handheld. I mean hand wound. Hand wound does yes. it clamp to the desk, does it? No, no, I no. move it around. So oh, it's, great. Yeah, yeah. So if you could describe your process, how would you say that you get started, for example, in a graphite drawing? Uh, start with a, a, a light outline, um, either I draw, if it's a complex piece I draw directly on the tracing paper because that'll take a lot of erasing and um, yeah, moving around without damaging the paper or I'll do a sketch on just cartridge paper and then transfer it to my good paper. So with your initial image do you use anything like construction drawing or a grid method or anything no, like that? Look, I think because I've drawn from little I've used shapes so I always start with basic shapes. Construction, construction. brilliant that's yes. what we love at Draw PJ we love construction drawing <laughs> see even the most professional artists still use the construction drawing method, so it's not just something that you begin with and then lose along the way. So that's great to hear. 
Now, I'm really curious because I know that Kate works in several mediums, but Kate, what is your favourite medium that you like to work in? Oh, I love the graphite, Cindy. Yes? Oh, yes, I began with that and it's very much my favourite. Why is that your favourite? Out of you, you work in coloured pencil and oils, but why is graphite your favourite? I think because it's the most simple of tools. You've just got a pencil and paper and you sit there with a large sheet of paper glaring at you and to bring it to life is the challenge and that's what I love. Wow, and to be able to get that incredibly realistic art like you get, and you know, Kate can get this amazing realistic art just from a few pencils on paper. That's truly incredible. So obviously, Kate loves her drawing experience so much. Kate, what is one piece of advice that you'd love to give to others to help keep them inspired and motivated just like you are after all these years? What keeps you going? What can you advise others to do? Oh, definitely. I think practice, follow your passion, use patience and perseverance and you can do anything with your drawing. Just keep at it. That is beautiful advice and I agree. Just keep on going. Now, Kate, I'm going to wind up now because I know you've got to go. But where can other people find out more about your art? Uh, I have a website, which is www.kgenvy.com and a Facebook page, which is Kate Genvy Fine Art. That's perfect. And we'll put a link for you on just below so you can take a look down there. Now, I just want to say thank you so much, Kate, for coming along to this fun interview in Cairns at the Shangri-La. And thank you for watching as well. It's been great having you here today with my coffee. And I'm going to see you next time. So just remember to show up at the table and the rest will take care of itself.